The F and Red Snowboarding Podcast is sponsored by Wired Snowboards from Vancouver, BC. I'm stoked that the boards I ride are made 10 minutes from where I live by guys that love to snowboard. As more and more Wired boards sell, I'm amazed to hear Rob tell me they're still able to build a custom board for you in about a week. But don't hold me to that because there's a limit to the number of hours these guys can work. You can find out how long it'll take for you to get a Wired board custom built with a custom graphic at wiredsnowboards.com. Or if you need to have one right now, Go to your local shop and buy a wired board today. If you live in Vancouver or North Vancouver, you can buy a board at either of the Boardroom Snowboard Shop locations. Go to boardroomshop.com for all your snowboarding needs. Support also comes from Dekine Outerwear, Anon Goggles, Vans Boots, Grouse Mountain, and Tribute Board Shop in Nelson, B.C. I saw Shane and the Tribute Boys last week at the Vancouver No Show. I was stoked to meet them in person. Tribute was named for snowboarding's super legend, Craig Elmer Kelly, who passed away in an avalanche on January 20th, 16 years ago. Seeing people's posts of Craig on the 20th has become a way to share in a celebration of Craig's life and his amazing contributions to this thing we all live called snowboarding. Whenever you're in Nelson, B.C., be sure to go to Tribute Board Shop and tell them you heard about them on the F and Rad Snowboarding Podcast. It was a totally fun time, didn't get too gnarly. I kind of look at the Mystery Air as an improved evolution of the Switchblade. Snowboarding is ours. And obviously I like working with Burton. As an old school snowboarder, you get so used to being treated as a second class citizen. And I was like, how do you spell your last name? He's like, K-E-L-L-Y. And I was like, oh, we should get married. And he's like, no, too symmetrical. Kale Stevens has had a long career, which started at age 12 getting sponsored by Sims. He was a standout competitive snowboarder for six years or so before moving to Whistler and starting to film video parts in the backcountry. He's well respected in the industry and is known to be able to handle heavy partying and still throw down hammers in the famous Whistler backcountry and all over the world. I recorded with him and his roommate Dave at his house in Squamish. Like the place to start is your legendary mom status. The fact that you're the only pro shredder that's got a fucking mom that rips harder than half the dudes you ride with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did that start? Um, mom got her for first board when I was 13. When I first started riding for Sims, so I got her a board. It was a Sims Asum freestyle asymmetrical freestyle board i remember that board yeah you hear how loud i am in here see if you can get yeah. closer to the yeah there you go whop, whop. and then maybe we should switch out your chair because yours is you're in the actual i'm in a squeaker <clears throat> what a beautiful what a beautiful table right. with just like <laughs> total snowboarder setup right now <laughs> this is like a fucking full-on snowboard all this, house all this furniture was at my grandma's I was like forever. My great grandpa made this. He made that. He made that china cabinet over there. Holy he actually shit. made all the oak stuff in here except for this table. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, he was. It, that was his job. He was like he, a craftsman. He, he had the Peterborough Showcase Company. Sick. From like it was like eighteen ninety something to. 1910, something like that. That's unfriggin' believable. So, yeah, where were you when when uh, when you started snowboarding? I already know you were in Collingwood. Yeah, I was in Collingwood. I was, I was 11. Is that your chair squeaking? I don't know who that is. I can hear something going... <laughs> <laughs> Might be the one that you're on. Yeah, that's definitely yours. You should swap that All out. All right, I can sit wicked still, or... No, it's fucking me. Yeah, it's definitely me. <laughs> no, that one's just as squeaky. Dave, 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 Dave's going to get a good one. I got stealth ass, so I wasn't I'll chop up this Romulan here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was in... Uh, I was in Collingwood, I... Yeah, I guess I was. I think I was eleven, not ten. Yeah, I was eleven, eighty-eight, eighty-nine. 
And did you guys you guys go to the local Canadian Tire and just pick up a Black Snow Edge? And... I got it from Towers. Oh my God, that's yeah. amazing! It was my uh, it was Towers. Christmas present. Yeah, killer. Thank you. I opened it Christmas Eve. Damn. All right, there. Dong. Okay, got it. So Christmas Day, you're out in the yard, basically looking for a fucking hill. Yeah. Did you already skateboard at that point? Like, so is it just an extension of skateboarding? No, oh, exactly. I uh, yeah, I skateboarded. You know, like since I was a baby, my brother. He was 14 years older than me, my mom's first kid, so he would put me on his board, like in the kitchen as a baby, and just stand me up and slide me across the kitchen, and and then he would, like, put me between his legs, and, like, back then he was, like, you know, because this was, like, I guess when I was still two, this was, like, 79 and shit, he would be, like, tic-tacking around, holding me in the middle, so I always had the feeling to be on a skateboard, because he would hold me between his legs and ride all around, and then... Eventually, I got a had you know a multitude of banana boards, yeah, and uh, just you know cruising, and then uh, I graduated like a Veriflex, I think when I was like seven, six or seven, and then God I got damn. this one called a Viper, and it was like carbon fiber hollow honeycomb. We got from like a swap near Peterborough. And then the next summer, I went to California to visit my dad with my mom. I was eight years old. This would have been 85, Huntington Beach in Cali. And my dad, uh, we went to the Jack's Surf Shop, skate shop there. And my, my dad got me uh, my first pro skate. It was uh, Jason Jesse, Tracker Ultralights, Slime Ball Wheels. The sun face one? No, the before that one, the Neptune. The Neptune. Yeah. That's fucking such the heyday of skate graphics, too. Oh, man. And Okay, so it's a perfect storm, then. You got a mom that's going to snowboard. You got an older brother, which that seems to be the recipe for being a fucking shred, is to have an older brother that you're kind of chasing a bit. And yeah. then you've got a dad in California, which that's just unheard of yeah so i was actually uh mate well my mom met my dad at a bar in long beach called the trap <laughs> and uh they met hit it off obviously and then uh i popped out a couple years later and i spent the first couple years of my life down there with my mom and dad we lived all over like southern cali and ended up in fallbrook california when i was like two or like an avocado farm, and Rad. Uh, yeah, my my brother lived there. Like my brother was fourteen when I was born, mm -hmm. and my dad already had four boys of his own when I was born. So there, I have four half brothers in California, or had when I grew up. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, we lived there till I was about two, and then uh, two and a half, and then went back to Ontario. So my dad stayed in Cali, and, uh, yeah. And then you went to Catholic school, even though you weren't Catholic. That's yeah. fucking well, incredible. It was, it was just the closest school in my zone, and my, my, I think my grandpa was actually mad at my mom because he was Christian. Yeah. My grandma really didn't give a fuck, and my mom didn't give a fuck, but it was just the closest school that made the most sense, so. Yeah. And all my friends that were close to me, they went there, so, yeah. I rolled in there. That's sick. So, so you're skating from a very young age, and then you. That, I mean, snowboarding at 11 is fucking very young at that time. I remember around that time, I would have been, you know, like 16, 15, 16, and we would go to those talisman contests or like Lake Ridge or whatever. Yeah. And like you guys would be such kids, we'd be like, they're fucking like children snowboard now like it was a weird thing that old people snowboarded that would be like a 25 year old you'd be like a fucking 25 year old snowboards down at blue mountain like i swear to god yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it was so many like 16 year old kids right oh, like exactly. 16 to 18 or whatever yeah but you guys like i mentioned before like dave craig and brian langhorst west coats you yeah west loats, west loats sorry yeah. west coats is a whole other guy yeah 
<laughs> you guys were like literally kids, like yeah. competing in the juniors, and then I don't know what we would have been in sixteen to eighteen or something. Yeah, we, oh, I was in at that point. I was in thirteen and under. Thirteen and under was and then the it went fi- kids, fifteen and above. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no, 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 no. It was. Oh yeah, it was fifteen and under, not thirteen and under. Yeah, and then, so you and would, then sixteen and above. I remember the kids that were under fifteen were crushing compared to the above sixteens, like by that point around ninety one, yeah, ninety two, to a certain degree, yeah, but yeah. Then, like, but then you had like Todd DeCoker, yep. and Kevin Young, yep. and those boys that were yeah. definitely a step way. Oh, above they were us fucking good. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But it, those contests, I for, I forgot until I was talking with Terry, like local contests would sometimes bring like a hundred guys out. Remember going to, did you go to those parties when you were that young, like the talisman, like just like all ages, yeah, yo, definitely. crazy shit. Like we were children yeah. at parties where there was booze. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, and cause <laughs> like I was there with my mom and yeah, my mom was friends with. You know, I was a kid at the time, so she became friends with all the other parents, and then the people that they're in their early twenties, whatever. It was just a community back then. It's yeah. like, yo, if you're here, you're here. Yeah, and we were there. So yeah, I can remember that. Uh, I have vague recollection of the hallways of that um, hotel that was there, and it would just be everybody would have their doors open, and exactly. people would be the, just the talisman. It was resort, insane, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those yeah, that was insane back then. And then I didn't even really know anything about out west until I rode with KY and Anthony and Anthony was talking about Black Home, like that was the spot. And uh then uh, actually what happened to me is is uh I went to Wendell's. So I don't even know. Oh yeah, do you remember when Tim Wendell came to Lake Ridge? No. Oh, it was so long. It was like 90. And then I went to Wendell's because he was on the chairlift with me. And I was like, I'm going to Craig Kelly's camp. No way. And he's like, you should come to my camp instead. And then I told my parents, like, Tim Wendell invited me to his camp. You know what? I do have a vague memory of him going there now. I remember. Yeah. Definitely. Because I remember, like, think like, oh, Kevin Young. I remember yeah. being like, yo, Kevin Young is like. Killing it better than Tim Wendell. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. Like, Tim Wendell came and he and he went as fast as he could at the at the goofy footed backside wall of that pipe at, at Lake Ridge, and he flew into the trees on his first hit, and he just was like, "I fucking hate this place. I'm not doing this anymore." And that was the demo. Yeah, he wasn't used to riding on the ice slick. I've heard that he's done that a few times. <laughs> if he's listening, and I know he listens sometimes, if he's listening, I've heard he's. That's yeah. a move he'll do is yeah. go up and just like bail big on the first hit and then be like, ah, fuck it. It's too icy. It's too yeah. shitty or whatever. I'm out. I can risk my buddy on this. Yeah. That was, uh, that was the windward Mark brought him in and windward Mark was doing yeah. checker pig boards. Kevin Young was riding for checker pig right after that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and then that was like the year before I moved out, but you stayed in Ontario and competed for four or five more years. Yeah, I, I uh, well, my first competition there, I was 12. I was at Talisman. And then there was three more I went to that year, I think. One at Dagmar, one at Lake Ridge, and maybe the other one was at Snow Valley. That makes sense. Or maybe two at Lake Ridge. Regardless, yeah, that was, uh, that was 90. Yeah. And Fuck. Then, and, and then, then, so when did you move out uh, to BC? I moved out to BC in ninety six. Ninety six, yeah. Yeah. So, and did you did you like did your mom come out here with you and you guys like settled into BC or did you move in with like Dow and Devin? And yeah, I moved Cash out and... here by myself. She came on a couple trips for the nationals. Yeah, and uh, stuff. But yeah, I moved out here. Moved into. 2028 Chesterfield, <laughs> it's like Devin and Dow, Cashin, Suaro, Dude, Winfield. Russell, Russell yeah. Winfield, yeah. <laughs> and my friend Carl that I grew up with, we moved out here together, Sick. Like, packed up, graduated, 
skated for a couple of days and just drove straight to Seattle and then up to Vancouver. You graduated grade 12 kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, and then exactly. you're like, I'm out. Yeah. Fuck it. So what time of year did you get here? Like summer? Yeah, summer. We got here like mid-July, hung out. For a couple months, and then uh, Carl and myself hopped in my truck and drove down to SoCal on a little skateboard trip and stayed at my brother's in Huntington Beach and just based out of there and then skateboarded all over from, like, L.A. to... We went and skated the YMCA in Carlsbad. Rad. And we'd go, like, go down to San Diego. So we stayed in Cali until, I think, uh, well, we got there for the SIA or ASR trade show in the surf September. One. Yeah. yeah. Surf skateboard and then we stayed until like the end of November. And, and then, then head, the snow, headed back to BC. Snow started, yeah. Yeah. Did you was Tom still running Sims at that point? Um he he no, he, I don't think he was really running it. He was out of it. It mm-hmm. was it was based out of Seattle back oh. then. Oh yeah, right. But uh, he still had a part of it, but he wasn't doing much. Like, w- was that the Umbro days? Yeah, that was Umbro. Yeah, the, like soccer yeah. company. Yeah, sports, it was crazy. Sportswear. That's so funny. Yeah. So your mom on that fakie, I, I remember that board well. Like black and like kind of purple, purple and gray. Yeah. And like it came, yeah, it came. Oh, in no, no, that was the the Asum. That's the Asum. That's what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fakie that the year fakie, was sick too. Yeah, right? yeah. I rode that fakie. Uh, I think the fakie came out a couple of years, year after, or maybe it did come out that year. I just didn't write it because the board I got was the Palmer. Yeah, the, f- the first board. Yeah, sick. That I got from Sims. Yeah, when I was thirteen. Would that it have a been fi- it was a fifty-seven. It was, yeah. it was definitely like a couple centimeters over my head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what were you riding before that? That before that, well, my first board was the Black Snow. So you got from, sponsored on a Black Snow, like no, somebody saw I, you. I rode the Black Snow, yeah, yeah, and then the next season I got a Camper Mini Rampage. Oh, the best! Yeah, from the like the Blue Mountain Turkey Sale. Nice. So, so it was I rode used. That. Yeah, it was used. It was yeah. Mini Rampage, Camper Bindings, Setback with like zero and forty five degree stance. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was the board I rode the next season in all the competitions and then I got sponsored at the end of that season Ralph Geronimo uh, you know I saw him after the competition and he was like hey I'm the Sims guy this and that you want to ride a, you want a free board and you want to, I was like yeah yeah damn straight and you got one for your mom too that's so sick yeah that's amazing and then uh, actually you were saying uh, Kevin Young was riding for Checkered Pig right so yeah I remember uh getting a ruler I was like and checkered off my whole board for the next year for, for the end of that season for the nationals at Lake Louise that's amazing when I was 14 so I just made it all checkered just because you know I didn't even know checker pigs weren't even checkered really <laughs> no, Whatever, I was just like I just remember that clicked in my brain like oh man I'm gonna checker this pig right here that's fucking amazing <laughs> Yeah, you know what? A lot of people don't remember Checker Pig because it was such a weird, you know, Tim Wendell was on Sims and he was like, what actually happened with Tim is he went to Austria with Craig and they they learned how to teach snowboarding together. And they actually ran their camp together for one year in Black oh, no way. Tim and Craig ran one single camp and then Tim broke away and did his own down in in uh, Mount Hood, but because they'd been training all summer, they had a leg up on everybody that hadn't been, and they both won, like, world champion titles the next year. And they were also breaking down how to snowboard, so they were really good at, like, using their edges and, like... Yeah, board, learn, board control. Board control and teaching how people how to do it. Like, they had dissected it so much that they got really good at, you know, learning themselves. That was a crazy time. Yeah, so, yeah, and then so and, I went to uh, I went to Camp of Champs when I was sick. fourteen, turning fifteen. So that was my first time. That's amazing. Whistler. Who were the head coaches and who were the like? Oh, it was uh, well back then. So Camp of Champs, we had uh, like who was it? Don Schwartz. Yep. Sick. Dan Ockenbach. Sick. Um, well, Kelly, Craig Kelly was off, obviously, at Kelly Camp. 
Yep. Rashi was up there. I don't know if he was a coach. Uh, Duck Boy would have been there. Yeah, Duck Boy. Man, that's like going back a long time. For yeah, me to like yeah Jacoby, right. Exactly no, there, no, no. I know. Uh, yeah. Did you go back to Ontario being like, holy shit, there's like a whole other world of snowboarding and the mountains are massive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I came back to, like when I got back to high school in September, after that whole summer, it just like changed my life. It was crazy, you know, like. I came back, I had, like, bleach blonde hair, <laughs> like, dreads, like, the start of dreads. <laughs> like dreads. Like, who is this kid? Everybody did that. Everyone had the Nick Parada starter dreads. Yeah. That's so sick. So, when you move out here, do you get a sled pretty much right away? Uh, the first year, Sims had 15 credits with the guy in Squamish. 15 days of free rentals for me. That's so, really cool. Yeah. First year. Yeah, first year. Fuck. And I was, uh, I met up with uh, Johnson and Kearns, and basically they asked me if I wanted to film for Whiskey 3. Oh, man. So I was on their program. My first day was in Brome Ridge, like right out of Squamish here. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was Johnson, Kearns... What was your impression? Could you handle it? And you were like, I'm down for this? Or were you like, this is fucking crazy? Well, it was, it was straight cloudy day with like two feet of powder. So it was like flat light on a crazy power for snowmobile. It was like a 583 two stroke for back then. It was, yeah, it was just insane. And after that, you know, that was just like, we didn't get anything done probably for a couple of days, but then you get out <laughs> on a sunny day and start making it happen. Yeah. Yeah, and Johnson and Kearns, were they as intense as they, was that like peak intensity for those guys? No, that was probably like two two years after that, they like mellowed out, you yeah. know, with like whiskey, whiskey came out, I right. think 95, yep. and whiskey two was probably 97, seven. Yeah. yeah, and then 98, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, so that were, those were like the wild days, and obviously they figured about it, like, oh, we're gonna, we sold about a bunch of videos, let's. Whiskey 3 was the one that actually had, like, proper snowboarding in it. Well, I, it was, I wouldn't say proper snowboarding. It was more tamed down to, like, part, part music. Yeah. And the yeah. other ones were raw, like, straight up just, you know. The shit that was going on in their lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah the real yeah, shit. Yeah. I, think, I think Kearns got intense after that as well when he started filming, like, forum videos and stuff. And standard or sorry, yeah, Mac those Dog. guys buckled down and got real professional and learned the craft of filming 16 and really, like, buckled I think down he was and intense. I think he was intense to film with. Like, for some people, it was, like, a little much. Yeah. Kearns? Kearns, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, he was always, you know, it was great. Like, I love filming with Kearns. He was just hilarious. And If he respects you, like, which he would have with you right away, it would be easy for you if you were somebody, like... DCP or someone that has to, you know, prove themselves or, you know, Kearns might get, if he gets his hooks yeah, into Yeah, he him, would definitely pick on people he here and there. Him, yeah. Like to pick on Browner a little bit for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just different people, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was what it was. It was just, it was just insane to be doing that at that time. It was a dream come true. Yeah. That's, so you guys fun. are pioneering the backcountry in the Whistler Valley. That's got and and getting paid. Were you getting paid fairly well? Um, so my first paycheck was I was eighteen, I think, with Sims, mm -hmm. and then uh, rode for Sims a couple of years. My pay went up, but then I got fired from Sims when I was twenty three. Oh no, no, not twenty three. Shit, what am I? That'd be five years. More like twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, twenty one, and then kind of went without a sponsor for a bit. Got on uh, Billabong. Oh yeah, and, that was big. And I had a little bit of savings, and I was like, oh, "What am I going to do?" So I was just like, "I'm just going to go hard and try and get some footage and get a some popping." So that was when I was filming for Clear Cut. I think I uh, got that going and just got kept getting uh, you know magazine coverage and stuff. 
Totally. And then I went to the trade show in Vegas just to hunt around for a sponsor and got put on to a lion snowboards and talked with those guys and had a little powwow and uh, figured out a contract. That was such a good team. Yeah, so I was like 23, like almost 23 when that happened. So. Yeah, so you'd had like a year and a half, almost two seasons in there where you were kind of scrambling. Yeah, I think just one season. Were you competing in half pipe at that point still? No, no. That was that was yeah, post. That was that. done. I was like snow, you were in, snowmobile land. Yeah, yeah, and you were riding with all the fucking heads. So you were still getting coverage. What boards were you riding? Your old sim bo- Sims boards. Yeah, well, I was riding Sims boards for that year. Mm-hmm. That uh, where I was still searching, kind of. Yeah, and then uh, I rode an option for a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I had like a couple of weeks on an option or yeah. a couple months on an option. Yeah. It was actually a really sick board. And then I uh, got the Lion gig. Sick. Yeah. And I got on a Babs Charlet. Yeah. 162. Oh my God. And then, uh, yeah. That's incredible. When did the fucking sled thing happen? That was insane. The, sl- the uh, sled deck. Oh, my nose. And what the fuck happened there? Like, I've heard the story from second hand. What happened for you? Like, so can you talk about it? I mean, you could, you did pictures of it that fucking day that I was like, I don't know if I can handle looking at these fucking pictures. Yeah. I can't imagine how you fucking dealt with that. So with a smile on your face, it was insane. I think it was really a smile. It was just drooping lip, fucking <laughs> drooping face. But uh, yeah, so. I, I had two sleds at the time. I had a O2 and a 2000 RMK. One of them had a little problem, so I had my sled stored at Devon and Kern's place in Alpine. So I didn't have a ramp in my truck. We went there, and I brought two of my friends because I was like, oh, I don't got a ramp. We're going to go switch these sleds out. Pull my other sled out, go to get the boys to hook it up, and I, was, I look out of the side of my... Out of the side view, I'm like, oh, there's a ramp right there. And I was like, well, it's not quite a ramp, but it's going to work. Yeah. Set it all up. Got it, uh, you know, back then I was using wood ramps. And it was like, you know, I'd only been doing it for a couple of years. And it was they were always heavy and sturdy and just stayed there. Yeah. But this ramp had like, you know, I picture a ladder where the rungs just went out further like each step went out like a two feet further so it was like definitely gonna hook my skis oh, and fuck. uh yeah not at the time so, juiced it up there my skis hooked on the ramp my ramp slid up the bumper my sled went under my truck so it was kind of like a ladder falling over your head and one of the rungs hooked the top of my nose pulled it down to the top of my l- lip basically like a christmas tree and oh, open it up fuck. and i bit my tongue off or most of the way through at the same time oh my fucking god what was the what was the recovery time on that oh well shit it was uh so i went about eight months not being able to breathe through my nose because when we pulled the packing out it was still swollen yeah it healed all together so I yeah had like a pinhole on one side and then i had another surgery at eight months yeah to like clear it out and open my nostrils and then about three months after that i started to breathe through my nostril like <sighs> half decent and then how about and your tongue was your tongue all right Just yeah stitches? The, no the tongue was huge i had like 40 some stitches in my tongue so oh. it was all like scar oh, tissue God. And that's actually what I was most worried about at a certain point, just because it was like, you know, it's everything, right? So I always, I had to like chew on my tongue and just like mush it around just to get all the scar tissue out of there. Holy you know, fucking just shit. For dude. years, really. Yeah. Like, that in the was beginning, insane. it was really tender. So after like a year and then the next year, and it's still a big lump in there, and I'm just like God. chewing it and massaging it away Damn. for a couple of years. And same with, same with my face on the nose. I would always have my hands here and constantly rubbing it around. Yeah. 
Yeah. You got to, right? That's what yeah. they told me to do. But so yeah. how long it, before it was, you could it was snowboard? Like two, um, I went uh, about six weeks later you once I got the freak. packing out. Oh, my God. But it was good. I couldn't breathe through my nose, really, but my mouth was good. And yeah. I was good. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. just... Luckily, it's... You in, filmed a part that year. Yeah. For oh. uh, Shakedown. Oh, my God. That yeah, was my last Mac Dog part. That's intense. That's crazy. Yeah, that was, what a year. It was intense. That was a doozer. Yeah. Yeah. You got cl- clips, like, the first day back, too, didn't you? I think almost the first day back, we went to Super... We went to, or uh, not super, we went to our perfect jump, like built perfect jump and whatever, and I think second day back. That was the day that JP knocked himself out, knocked his teeth out. Oh, fuck. Guinea pigging it and got hellied out of there, and then uh, we were all going to go, and I, I just hit it straight air a bunch of times in a row. Yeah. I just did like 10 straight airs over it or less, maybe like eight, who knows. But, uh, unbelievable. That was my first day really getting it back since then. Yeah. Yeah. How has that affected your life since then? Like, if, did you get back to 100%? Um, yeah, my my nose isn't 100%. I would say it's like 80% of the passageway. Sure. But uh, the swelling has mainly gone down and mm, mm-hmm. all that. You know, it's been years now. I was, 20, yeah. I was 25. Yeah. Back then, now I'm 41, so... Yeah, 16, 16 years, years ago. years ago, yeah. It was after Devin smashed his voice box, too, right? Yeah, yeah, he did that a bit before then. A couple like, years that before like that or whatever. 90, like 99, he did? Yeah. 98. 98. I remember when he came Rainbow. in. Yeah. yeah, I remember when he came in and I was like, is your voice going to be that forever? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, I don't really care. I was like, yeah, it's pretty badass, actually. You guys were fucking badasses taking, I just, I remember seeing those photos and I don't know what iteration of the internet it was at that point. I think it was maybe just emails or MySpace or some shit like that. And it was like, MySpace. oh my fucking (laughs) God, have you seen these? And everybody was like, I remember having a MySpace and popping those up on my MySpace like this. Yeah, that's you know, what when, it was. When we were at the hospital, I right? Got, I got instantly. Uh, yeah, we were at, we were there like it happened at like ten thirty at night. So by the time oh, we God. got to the hospital, it was eleven. And in Whistler, the hospitals close like closes yeah. at ten. Yeah, which makes no sense in a resort town. Yeah, you have to it, call it, a it number and then, then they yeah, have to. So bring we rolled into in. the ambulance loop and yeah, got on the phone and we're like, "Yo, my friend's like, yo, my friend chopped his nose off. There's blood everywhere. Hurry up! <laughs> Fuck. We wait." We wait like 40 minutes for an ambulance. So they get there and they like saunter out of the ambulance, do to do. And then they look at me like, and they start getting white. And they're like, this kid really did chop his nose off. I get it here. So then we go into the hospital and it's like, you know, we're waiting another 40 minutes for the doctor to show up. Right. So in that time, we're sitting there. I was like, shit, here's some money. I got one of my boys to run to 7 Eleven to grab a little disposable camera. That's incredible. So. Yeah, they ran over, came back, popped that <laughs> off. I did a couple different poses. Yep. And uh, that role, that took like, you know, five, ten minutes to use 24 frames. And then yeah. we should have went and got another one because after that, I was still playing with it for another 20 minutes. Like, uh, and like we would have definitely got some. Oh, my we, Imagine God. we had a video camera back then. Yeah. And phone footage. That's, yeah, you that would, yeah, 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 you should have called somebody. Yeah, yeah, you should have called somebody with it. With a high eight or something, but yeah, they did. They they turned that photo into that air hole, into that yeah, yeah. In that face mask. Yeah, that was yeah, that was my doing there. I was yeah, like, oh, we might as well use one of these. It was fucking awesome. That's so badass. So yeah, let's talk about air hole a bit. When did that? I've heard that maybe it was Browner, and then you came up with the hole because you wanted to smoke ciggies. No, no, we, it was Browner and myself. We we're out near Grizzly Lake snowmobiling. On our way back after a long day, we had both had our you know, balaclavas under our helmets, mm-hmm. and we got back, you know, stopped just out near the forum, stepped down, and, you know, pulled over, sunset happening, so we pull over to smoke a little dube, have some tea, light to eat, our bandanas are all iced up from breathing in, and it was a cold day. So we pull them off, and we're talking about it, like, fuck, wouldn't it be nice if you could just, like, breathe out all this condensation forming around here and like 
one of us or both of us were like, yeah, let's cut a hole. So I think I got his scissors and I cut a hole out of mine. And I had a fresh one in my backpack, so I went and pulled that out and cut the hole out of that and put it in on. We both made them for the way down. And by the time we got to the trucks, it was still like another 20-minute, half-hour snowmobile out. And it just worked so well. It was like, oh, my God, this feels great. Just breathing freely. It's not icing up. And we were just like, oh, let's do this. Well, it's, this is great. Nobody's the first day, the first day you were yeah, like, yeah. let's make so money from the, this. So the, next, so the next day I went to the government agent in Squamish and registered the name Airhole. And, Sick. And, yeah. and then uh, we just didn't, we just started making a couple right here on this table that we're sitting at. Amazing. There's a sewing machine right there. So yeah. Not that one, that was actually my grandma's old one that we started them on. But this is a new one that we got since... We started, but uh, how many did you make? We just started making samples. We probably made like five or in between five balaclavas and then a bunch of straight bandanas and different stuff. But mm-hmm. then we were down at uh, Iris, the Iris place, yeah, like Carl Fury. Um, and anyways, Carl started making like filming us. We we're in there like day drunk, kind of like fucking around, like, yo, check out our masks and this and that. and Carl just kind of gorilla a little commercial for us that we didn't know about and threw it up on the Iris website at the time. And next day, he's like, you know, we seen him, we're like, oh, holy shit, look at that. And then he's like, yo, man, we got orders. We got, like, next day, he's like, we got orders. We got, like, ten shops called us saying, yo, we want these things. Amazing. So, like, yo, we're going to do this. And then, uh, so me and Browner shopped it around between Iris and uh, Endeavor. Yeah. And I was writing for Endeavor at the time, after Lion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was, yeah, we just ended up going with Endeavor because they'd been making, you know, a lot of apparel and stuff in China, and they'd been, you know, popping it there for about eight years at the time. Like, yeah, they had the good. connections to do it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was just, yeah, it was good. Got that going, and... Uh, Endeavor just, at that time, that, that uh, warehouse space that they had yeah and just the people that were there dow yeah, yeah, and, and, and cordova yeah and and surface was working out of there yeah. and janky was always in there and bros was still there at the time i think yeah i've and they just you could tell that they had like the right aesthetic to you know to be like a cool yeah. like just a fucking awesome distribution center or whatever no exactly it was great that was nice because after, uh, you know, I wrote for a lion for so long. It was like five or six years, and then that pieced off, and then those guys were like, oh, you want to fucks with us for a little bit? <laughs> so, yeah, they uh, yeah they definitely helped me out for a while. Gave me, and I got my, uh, I had like two pro models with them. What was that? What year was that? 07. So I started, Air, we, me and Brown started Airhole in 07, and then they partnered up with us right away yeah and uh it made them a lot of money too like i know that there was times where Airhole was carrying endeavor like sales wise or just like money wise yeah the, it was so ta- huge the tag team up for sure yeah, like it, yeah. grew, it grew really fast like yeah. it, our first year i think it was close to our first year was like ten thousand or something close to ten thousand air holes and then yeah. it, almost kept doubling for the first like three or four years like I think it was like 10,000 and 18,000 and 30 some thousand units right yeah and yeah. Uh, it was just like wow like <laughs> Japan was going hard on them and like we we're just every yeah. shop just like as many as you could bring in they would all sell out the the, uh, the creative driving force behind it was that you guys still or like all, that in, whole team in, in the beginning for the first couple of years, it was uh, myself, Browner, Johnny Summers, basically sitting around here in this living room right here at this table, like, just, we were, like, up, just, like, you know, getting it. We were, like, 20, I was 28 when I got this house, so we were, like, late 20s, just, like, you know, up till the sun comes up, drawing, like, we have so much art that we did, like, in my back room, I'll show you after this, we have yeah. tons of stuff. Sick. 
Um, yeah, just brainstorming and creating the vibe. And then get... figuring out, like, the, even the Velcro and all that shit. Was oh, that yeah. Guys? Yeah, that was, yeah, like, it was myself and Browner. Yeah. And a little bit of help from Johnny Summers, of course. But yeah. uh, we, I made the patterns with Chris. And, like, I, I'm the one that learned how to sew in high school. So I was the one <laughs> on the sewing machine. And me and Chris tag teamed the patterns. And uh, I love that. Just kept making samples and samples and samples and. It was, it was really fun. Like, it's it probably was... the most knocked off thing now. Like because air hole is not just for snowboarding. It, it quickly became for hunting, riding a fucking oh, exactly. motorcycle, all that shit. Well, like, we just knocked off face masks, but we just made them better. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, everything's knocked off now. Like, it's yeah, not, it's pretty hard to not knock something off. Yeah, if you're gonna yeah. do anything, but you just take something and make it better. Put your own twist on it, type shit. My kids don't ride without one. And I'm like, I I never ride with them unless I'm in the backcountry and it's fucking freezing. Yeah, certain situations when it's like, when you're like at the point where you're like shrugging your shoulders up to pull your collar yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah, And you got shoulder tension. Yeah. At that point, put up your air hole, you release your shoulders, Chill the swiggle fuck your out. neck, and you're like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. that's good. I see kids in the spring at Grouse. It's like 20 degrees out and they got their air holes on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a, that's the sun, it's a style sun, sun protector it's at a, that point. Okay, it's, yeah, that's, that's it's, sunscreen. It's I think natural. I think uh, Sean White wearing a fucking face mask definitely. All those kids want to look like that. Like that's what a snowboarder looks like now. Like that happened that, in a video yeah, at game. At that time, yeah. especially you know, he was hitting the all that. You know, he was always wearing that because you know, cover his face. And definitely in the beginning, me and Brown were like, yo. We're gonna put one of these on fucking Sean, this and that, whatever. Yeah, you know, obviously never worked out that way. He's like, what was he two, wearing? He's just two bot. He's just wearing like a like a straight Bell black. No, just something. like a straight bandana or like black thing. His over own his helmet. Just yeah, with yeah. no hole. Whatever, just a little face protector. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, cool. Protect cause the ginger. Actually, yeah. When we were at uh, Sunshine, I was riding with Terry. He still rides with one, so you can't tell who he is if you're out there, except you can see his style. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's that's one good thing too. If you're out there and you just you know people that want to be yeah. a little more stealth, it's like a hundred percent. You have no idea who's yeah. who's under there. That's yeah. badass. Throwing a little limp and do some different <laughs> shit. Like yeah, don't know who that is. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, obviously, the multi-purpose. Yeah, and you and you guys, you and Browner did all right with that. Um. Yeah, we're still. Yeah, it's still. Uh, we're partnered up with with Endeavor. Yeah. Still. Uh, so it was Max Janky and his dad Bruce. Yeah. And Surface was with with them up until just about six months ago. Yeah. And he just exited, so it's just the four of us now. Yeah. And yeah, I saw that that space is in half now or in quarter or whatever. And they they run somebody's doing events back there. I saw oh, yeah. a video and, premiere back there. Okay, and Surface's studio side. Exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. That makes yeah. sense. It's a cool spot, man. Oh, that spot's really nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was... Uh, that Rail was Town, a... there. That's a really nice zone. Yeah, so. totally. So, what's... Uh, like, uh, we've kind of gone all the way through, but let's talk a bit about your mom, because I said it at the beginning, and then we moved the chairs all around. She... Everybody knows her in the community, in the pro snowboarding community, yeah? Yeah. Well, like, and you bring a her lot to... Of, a lot of people do, or used to, and, yeah. and still do, of course, but definitely, yeah. like, the and old she's school, still... gold, golden days people. Like, she was around totally. through all my competing days. Like, she yeah. was driving me to the U.S. Open and with all of my friends and her big extended Ford van when I was 15. Right. That was the year before... I went in it. I wasn't in it. We just went down there because we knew it was popping off. So we got like five of my or four of my friends and uh, went down there. And she was just around since day one. So like yeah. everybody knew her. She's like a lot of like nowadays. I'll be in Whistler and being like, oh, that's Diane's son. <laughs> like for real around the mill. Like oh, because she rides the hill all the time. So she's like, oh, my son Kale this and that. Blah blah blah. She should do the the. Uh... Baker Banks slalom. Yeah, well, she she was there with me, I think twice or maybe three times back in the day because I've done it, I think four or five times when I was like sixteen, 
17, 18, 19. Yeah. Um, did she ever enter? Did I don't know if she did. I, I don't think she did because that was like earlier days when she was still figuring it. Like she could do it now. Yeah. But back then she was still like a semi-beginner and the equipment wasn't all there. I gotcha. Like she's definitely progressed. Like she started when she was 48. God and now man. she's 75. Oof. And she really started to get good in her like 60s. That's amazing. Like even like in her like late fifties, but after she rode for a decade and then equipment got better and she's gotten healthier and her muscles are, you know, like she, she rides, she rides fast. Like back in those Mount Baker bank slaloms, you know, there's Mount Herman across from Mount Baker right there. Yeah. And we were hiking up there to do a Sims photo shoot and it's like a, 2300 foot hike it's like a huge hike right to the peak of mount herman and yeah she like did it with us she's like did it with her with her v8 camera pouch everything like hiked the whole thing up there with us like it wasn't like very far behind came in and like film I, we have that footage in the basement actually in the basement, do you have tapes and tapes in boxes? Wait, wait till you come downstairs. We haven't even taken you down there yet. We have like all these tapes, like all my mom's tapes from like 1992 U.S. Open when I was 15, all the way up to like 99. And then we have all the mini DV tapes. Oh my! We have God. all this stuff we're about to capture. And like yeah, get it all popping off. It's that's so sick. Yeah, people are going to be tripping on that on that footage right. for sure. I actually just pulled out the box like a week ago and started watching, like just watching, watching, and like we're not capturing yet, but you know, we're just losing it. Like, oh, that's gold. So we dope. have so much gold. Yeah, that's amazing. So, what did she do all those years? Is like, what was her career? Um, she was. Uh, well, we had a, a flea market in Collingwood. She had like five different. Five in a row, like five spaces, and it was, you know, she would travel around, like, buying, you know, furniture and, like, yard sailing and getting deals, buying yeah. and selling. Yeah. Like, just cool old hippie shit, eclectic, you know, gypsy. I love that. Yeah. So, she did that for a while, and then uh, the flea market ended up closing when I was, like, 16 or maybe 17, and... uh but that whole time she was still like just whatever money she saved or whatever, she would travel to competitions with me and even uh, spare. Cause I rode for when I was 16, I got ninth at the U S open. So that was, wow. that was my first time in the U S open. So Sim was riding for Sims for three years since I was 13. And they were like, Oh, well, Noah Slaznik got 10th, and I got 9th, so, and I was on his board, you know, the Noah's Nub green with the yellow base with the skate trucks, Yep. and so they were like, okay, we'll we'll put this kid on the pro team, and then Spare, Ezekiel, you know, Ezekiel, and Spare was a clothing brand they started along with Blonde. Right. So they were there, the owners of that, Vince De La Pena, he offered me, you know, you know, you want to ride for us? I was like, bam. They were at a SoCal, so I was, like, immediately on that, and then they were just really cool, and they, like, they paid for my mom to go to Japan with me oh. that year. They're, like, I'm, like, oh, I'm going to Japan, this and that, and I was, like, yeah, you guys want to pay for my mom? Like, she's, like, the fucking making it happen, and they were just, like, yeah, damn straight. They paid for my mom, and then I think Sims put in some money for my mom another time to go to Japan. So my mom's been to Japan like twice That's rad. with me or maybe three times. I think just twice, but, and she's always there with her high eight camera, like capturing everything God, at damn. the bottom of the pipe, yeah. zoomed into the top in a snowstorm, just like following handheld panning. Everybody's runs perfect. And like, I love it. Yeah. She's got a lot of footage. Like that's, that's legend status, right? Yeah. There. Like all over. She, we, like from Colorado, like from Vail to Kirkwood, California, Big Bear, um, like Vermont, like Stratton, Okemo, Kirkwood. Oh man, Sugarloaf, Maine. So um, did you? Casing Ridge, New York. 
That's fucked up. Did you miss competitions when you like? Did you quit in a big way, or did was there a a thing that happened like where you're like ah fuck competing, or was it just like you got on a sled and it's like yeah I just no... I just kind of knew that if I was putting out images and magazines instead of this competition. Because I was a straight competition kid, and then I knew, like, I'm looking at magazines and seeing this and watching, you know, every video since I'm a kid. And, you know, like, it's like, well, I realized I could make that pop off instead of competing, and I don't want to land on my head on ice and a fucking icy half pipe. I don't land on my head over a 100-foot jump and three feet of powder, and it was, like, not a problem. Yeah, so It's yeah. just like... Dreamland. Right? Who who was the first crew that you filmed with? Um, that would have been uh, Johnson and Kearns for Whiskey Three. For Whiskey Three, yeah. And then right from there, do you who do you film with after? Like Kingpin? Uh, no, I was did Whiskey oh, Three, yeah. Whiskey Four, yeah. And then I was filming with Mouse, yeah. High Voltage, you know, Sick. Jamie Mossberg, of course. So we did. Uh, he did Milk. Yeah, and then I wasn't in that, but then I was in the Golden Circle Awards. Yep, and 1999. Yeah, and as I was filming for those, I started filming for Treetop Productions and yeah. did Clear Cut and Second Wind. Right during the same time, like actually, it was Golden Circle Awards, and then the year after, I did Clear Cut and 1999, and then Second Wind. The year after that, I only filmed for them. Second one was great. It was a good film. Yeah. And Clear Cut, too, man. Like yeah, oh, best, yeah, both of those. The best yeah. BC movies. Yeah, it was yeah. so good. Yeah, they were really building their brand at that point. It was sick. Yeah. And then did you film with MacDog after that? Yeah. So, actually, then there was another Clear Cut movie, Third Degree Burns. Yep, yeah. And, and as all that Clear Cut stuff was happening, that's, that's when... Uh, Adios, amigo. Yo. Yeah. Later, Hello. later, yeah. skater. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. You guys maybe go out the front door. Oh, yeah. I just need a shoot. Or, yeah, whatever. Don't matter. Um, yeah, so as that was happening, that's uh, 1999 with Clear Cut and all that. That's the same time, uh, same time we were doing 1999, or like uh, Little Bastards. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... We did Little Bastards, and that was the Iris movie. That wasn't even a Wildcat movie. But right. That was the beginning of the Wildcats. Yeah, yeah. And then the year after that, we did Return of the Wildcats, which was the first Wildcat movie. Right. Yeah, <laughs> nice. What was the deal with the Wildcats? It was just the backflips. It was something that everybody... It, it was... Um, Actually, I... wait, was the Wildcats named, and then the, the trick was named after the group, because yeah. everyone in the group could do it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it, that high was, test beer. We, right? we were at Devin's partying. Yeah. After shredding, we were partying. It was like daytime, and he had a box of jeans and, and old shirts. And we had a couple cases of Wildcat beer. Yeah. And we were just day partying at his house. And he's like, I got all this <laughs> shit. I got, got to get rid of jeans and shit. And we just like got scissors and shit. We started cutting it up, making like. You know, like rocker shit and just like getting fucking weird and getting hammered. And JF came back with like steaks and mushrooms and shit and had a huge barbecue and we're just getting hammered on Wildcat beer and just fucking being idiots and just getting loose. And because uh, we're drinking Wildcat and everybody's like, yeah. it's just, I'm not sure who said it or whatever, like obviously, just try to be dug up before. But yeah, like the Wildcats, obviously, it was because of the beer. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, after shredding for a bit, doing that perfect cartwheel, cartwheel backflip indie. Yeah. It's like that just stuck. Like, yo, that's a wildcat now. Yeah, because I remember in that movie, you guys did them all in a train. Yeah, all the boys did in uh, New Zealand. I actually, yeah. I wasn't there for that. I actually, uh, that was, is that the year I got, I was supposed to go to New Zealand. I got, I got, caught by my sims team manager in tommy africa's and I, I was like i had some acid and i was like selling acid to somebody 
like just randomly like, oh, you got some acid. And I was like, oh, well, I, ha- I actually happen to have some acid. <laughs> yeah. For just like I wasn't an acid dealer or whatever, but I was like, yeah, for sure. And I just kind of did it right in front of her or whatever. And then she like was like, oh, okay, it was a menace. We got to get him off the team. It's like selling drugs in the bar. Right that's how me. you got kicked off of Sims? That's how I got... That's how I got kicked off the trip to New Zealand. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's still crazy. That's how I got crazy. tripped off the trip to New Zealand, and yeah. then eventually it's probably why I got kicked off Sims. And that's like... Oh, you know what? They were yeah. going to fire me, too, and then Al Clark, because Al Clark wrote for them, and I, yeah. he was my fucking homie, because I lived with them forever, and you know, we're boys, and he was like, you, you know, if you're firing Kale, I quit, type shit. Sick. He, like, held me down heavy. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, Al. Basically, I uh, held it down for me. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. That's unbelievable. When, uh, oh, yeah. So that's the reason I didn't go to New Zealand that year and do a Wildcat in the yeah. lineup with the yeah. boys. That was the first Wildcat lineup, that New Zealand trip. I mean, they were doing it. I remember seeing them riding at Seymour. And it yeah, was, yeah. It was... it was, like, ironic, but it was also, like, everybody in the crew could do it. You know what I mean? Like, because nobody was doing flips. When I moved yeah. out here in 93, I could do a flip. And yeah. I was like so sick. Well, like, you do like a flip where you like lean back and yeah. then lean up back flip. But yeah. You do a yeah. perfect like cartwheel off the tail, like yeah. sluggo. Yeah. Sluggo, yeah. but basically a sluggo fucking roll, but straight. Yeah. 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 Sick. Fuck. That was a fun time. That yeah. was a good crew to be a part of, huh? So, like, you film with those guys for a few. And while you're filming with them, that's when the Mac Dog thing is going down. Um, that was before. That was like before Mac Dog in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning, yeah. it was before Mac Dog because yeah. that was while I was with Treetop. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, after 1999. Were you that. Were you like so fucking pumped to be filming for the movie of all movies, like the Mac Dog with film? Mac Dog? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that uh, yeah that worked out. Somehow I was, because uh, I was still f- filming for Clear Cut. That, that was the, as soon as I got my Lion board, when I had no sponsor, I went down and got that Lion board, started writing that, and then I was passing them. It was like, Mac Dog was there, I think Kearns was there, and it was obviously my homies, so I was like, oh. I didn't know Mac Dog at the time. But was it Gary Pendergrass? Fuck, I don't know, I was... Obviously, pretty baked at the time. <laughs> Obviously, pretty baked. But, uh, anyways, yeah, so uh, they were just like hitting this thing and they wanted somebody to get up on there. And they, uh, who else was there? Probably Sansalone. Anyways, so I got up on top of it and I wasn't filming for them and I just ding, 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 got in the crew and hit it three times and got three good shots right away. And he, just threw them in the movie so that was my way in for the next year that's amazing so the next year i actually got to film a part see so most guys would have it that their sponsor was buying ads yeah, for the movie exactly. and then they would then they would get a call and someone would say you're filming with mac dog make sure you're fucking here on time right now yeah but I, you I, just, I just i stuck my oops <laughs> I, I just jammed my foot in the door somehow you barged there. your way in but that's like i wasn't trying to i was just no, like exactly. it was just out of necessity because they needed to get somebody to get to the top that's so fucking rad though like you know like that's a great story to to actually yeah, get man, in that, that timing like was that. impeccable right there that was yeah that's that dope was, that was good and then you know obviously i that happened, and I got in to stand and deliver the next year, and my yep. sponsors were really stoked, so my sponsors yeah. did throw down. Yeah. And everything meshed well. Like, it was it was good because I had so many different sponsors at the time that they all fed off each other. Yeah. I didn't have all my eggs in one basket, so, like, Billabong fed off DVS, fed off Drop, fed off Iris, fed off... A lion. And God damn, everything. that's a good line of the sponsors. The source in Calgary. Yeah, those boys hooked me up. Amazing. It was like it was 2007 because that was the year I got my sled. So we had a Wildcats premiere there for I think for Nine Lives. We're partying in Calgary and partying with the boys uh, like Mark Weeks. I think it was Mark and uh, 
he was like, I want you on the team for next year. What can I do? And there with Devin and all the boys. I'm like, I could really use a new snowmobile. And he just put out his hand. He's like, done. I was like, what? Oh, my And we were hammered God. partying at the thing. I was like, but that stuck in my head. I'm like, yo, this is Christmas. And <laughs> talked to him the next day, and he brought it up. He's like, oh, I promised you a snowmobile last night, didn't I? What? I was like, yeah, you sure you did. He's like, fuck. <laughs> Like, I knew I'd been drinking. It's like, damn. So that was amazing. I got back to Squamish, like, whatever. And the dealership here was like, he called up the credit card. And was like, bam, got here, went and, like, picked it up right away. And it was like fall. It was like, got it, like, in December because the premiere happened in November, whatever. So I got this, like, yeah. like right away. They had it. I was like, oh so fucking cool. Fucking God, that's amazing. Yeah, the source killed it there for me. Shout that's out nice. to Mark at the source. That guy, I've heard nothing but good about that guy, dude. Like, he just gets it, right? Like, oh, yeah. He, he takes care of his staff really well, and and he's all about snowboarding. He's actually a shredder, too, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Fuck, Mark's been shredding for forever. Yeah. yeah I think right. the first time I seen him was... I'm pretty sure the first time I saw him was at Canadian Nationals in Banff. Or mm-hmm. Lake Louise when I was 12. Oh, God. And that was the first Nationals. Yeah. 91. When did you start partying? When you moved out here after high school? Or did you party a little bit as a kid when you were... No, I didn't really party as a kid. Yeah. Like, partied once I got into high school, like, more like, four, you know, when I was 14. Sure, sure, sure. When I, when I moved, you know, I was 14. So I sold... I, on the way back from California with my mom and granny, we went through like Indiana or something. Bought a ton of firecrackers, yeah, like a like bricks and bricks of black cats and, yep. bought, and bottle rockets. Sick. So my I, my mom was like, we're rolling through. And I'm like, mom, like we need to get a bit. I can like load up. I can like <laughs> sell all these. I'm gonna get it. So she like we smuggled all these firecrackers back into Canada, and I sold them for like all of grade eight. <laughs> Oh my god! Like all of like I think it was like the summer and then all of grade eight and I got I had like fourteen hundred dollars saved amazing. up some firecracker money <laughs> and my plan because I'd been like going to Toronto to my buddy Joe McAdoo's place and I know jump, Joe jump, jumping on the trampoline yeah for like training I'm like I'm gonna get a trampoline for summer training sick snowboarding and I was like well and then I was riding for Sims because. uh you know, they hooked me up and they like, gave me the option to go to Camp of Champions so for free. Dope. So, like, if you get out there, you can get free Camp of Champions. So, I just was like, well, man, the plane ticket's cheaper than the trampoline. Yep. So, like, fuck the trampoline. I'm going to fucking <laughs> BC. And then, uh, and that was when Wes Lotes came out here with Anthony Vitelli. Wes's dad was paying Anthony to take Sa- care yeah, of Wes. Yeah, same year. Yeah, same year. Sick. So, I was... 14 i turned 15 in july Mm -hmm. 25th and wes i think was like just turned 13 he was like 12 just turned 13 like (laughs) little man but that's (laughs) what that's when i started partying you know that's like basically i smoked weed before then when i was like yeah you know 14 a couple times but then i really started smoking weed and like then like drinking with you know a little bit of drinking but it was mostly back then just like smoking weed and laughing and like skateboarding and like yeah just like yeah was, did you ever get to a point where the partying was like taking over and you weren't going snowboarding you were getting shit done or in, in you... the in the wildcat days we had yep. we would have nights where it's like we okay like you know we're still up it's, you see it in a couple of the videos like we call trevor it's like me and brown are calling trevor get him up early morning and it's like five and we're still up and anthony shows up we wanted to go, me and Browner, when he gets there and we're like hammered, realizing that we shouldn't go sledding <laughs> early morning. But yeah, of course, a couple times it did. Yeah. Did. But no, you never had like a season where you're like, oh, fuck, I'm blowing it this season. I just, yeah, I'm going not, party. Not, not when I was getting paid. Good. Not, not yeah. when I was getting paid to shred, for sure. <laughs> Over the last few years, I've had a couple seasons where, you know, I'm like doing my thing. I'm like, yo, well, I've been hitting it pretty good. Yeah, could have could have got that powder, or I could have got what I yeah got all that mess I got into for the last day or two. What do you got for <laughs> What do you got for sponsors these days? Like where where are you at with snowboarding? Is it just you for it's, yourself? It's now? just me, baby. Yeah, and mom sponsored yep. by mom still. Sick. 
I'm still <laughs> OG sponsor. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm riding uh, dope snowboards now. My cool. roommate, my roommate Dave. You know, obviously, you know, people know about dope dope industry, so I'm riding out those now because he's been living with me for like three years. And uh, I feel like those have been exponentially getting better from the like original, just like blackboard with the dope on it to like fucking seriously yeah. legit graphics. Well, that's and, like yeah, that's a the two year curve here. Yeah, it's just a like, very quick two year curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Original samples. Yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, and you and, and uh, you know I'm. I'd been riding Endeavor boards because they've always been giving me boards because of air hole, you know, the connection. Yeah, right, from the beginning. Right. So I've been riding Endeavor, but, you know, that I've still rode an Endeavor here and there, but, I'm, you know, Dave's my boy, so it's like, you know, he's, yeah. I'm really trying to, like, you know, you have, just watch him. Do you shoot him. photos and shit on him? Like, do you, do you well, sometimes I, I go up when you see people? I, uh... Yeah, I have. Last year I was pretty mellow about it. I want to this year, but I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get get on him. It's not my main priority, but uh, just getting pow. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna get some shots. There's gonna be some shit on the day. That's fucking great, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I definitely like don't feel. Uh, if I had like, if I had the opportunity to lay, like have like, oh, here's. Uh, Here's your this, here's your heli time, here's your budget. Like, right. yo, man, trust me, I would get after it. But, like, yeah. I'm doing, like, life shit. I can't, you, I can't get after it as hard as I do would you love to right now. Do you feel, like, kind of a sense of relief to not have to be doing that shit? Or? I Yeah, I used to back when I first retired. Yeah. You know, back when I was, like, 31, 30, 32, 33. Yeah. And I definitely... Uh, got that nice sense of relief like oh i'm not like obligated to put my it's a hectic to put, schedule to put my body yeah. on the line here and yeah. go like physic it's phys- physically demanding and Fuck yeah. wears you out gnarly, and but, dangerous and dangerous yeah for sure yeah that, that you know that being one of the main points but yeah there's a relief <laughs> when it's like oh i don't have to hit this 100 foot jump i could just like launch this little guy over here but you know that i i still really I want to get it. Like I just, yeah. I just want to get. I just need a little more. Uh, yeah, if I had a little more wiggle room right now, where I had a budget to be like, bing, 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 bing. Trust me, that's all I'd be doing. You could probably make it happen. Yeah, yeah. If you, you know, throw it I mean? out there and get yeah. some trips pop and be like, oh, let's get some trips pop and yo, we need to go to. Yeah, the way that Nico and and Terry are doing it, and I mean, they still have legit sponsors, but there's also those like surprise guests. You know, and then there's bald face and oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's there's a real uh, oh, trust me, there's love for we're get, we're gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get it. Yeah, yeah. The season's early right now. It's what's the twenty second. Yep, very early. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I'm good. psyched so I've far. Had, I've had I've had some one. I've had some really good days too this year. Like Whistler's been just, getting crazy snow. Oh yeah, yeah. Big storms. Yeah, I've had ten days on Whistler, and like nine of them or eight of them were like really nice pow days. Oh, that's so I'm good. I'm just to hear. cruising, like yeah, yeah. Feels good to be back. Sick, dude. Sick. I'm gonna take a quick piss break here. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Fucking piss for a second. You put together an all-time list of sponsors when you were, you know, building your snowboard career. Did you have a pro model on IS? On Iris? Yeah. That's yeah. fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I, I think maybe like three or four different years. That team was stacked. We, we would, it would be the team goal, but we'd each get a colorway. So we'd pick our own colorway ah, and we'd have our little signature on the back where the clip was. Those sold so well. Yeah. I know. Like, It's a shame that Iris isn't popping anymore, but... Yeah, I don't really know how that fizzled out. It shouldn't have, but... Yeah, it just... Uh, it's hard. It was hard market, and I always know. had I always had the feeling that Devin kind of bankrolled, like you know, like Wildcats clothing and like IS. I thought that he had no, some he did, yeah. In it. No, yeah, Devin was uh, it was Jack Wang and Devin yeah. and yeah. Devin. I'm not sure what the percentage was or whatever, but it was you know it was Devin's mm-hmm. child basically. And, and then, uh, yeah, he did bankroll that, and he did bankroll. Um, a lot of Wildcat stuff, and then him and JF later 
partnered up and bankrolled stuff when the movie, you know, that yeah. uh, Wildcats Never Die came, like, before that. But that was, like, obviously way later, but yeah, yeah Devin yeah. was uh, the boss, as usual, type. That's fucking dope. Yeah. So at this point, I tell a story about Kale and Devin's roommate and Wildcats teammate Dave Cashin. But that's a story for a Cashin episode. Yeah, it was older to Cashin. Yeah. You know, back then. It was, it was awesome. Like, great yeah. energy and you'd get loose. Yeah. He was such a good skateboarder. I remember him, like... Very good. Before I just moved... Because he, like, moved out... He was from Ontario and I just knew, like... I think when I was, like, skating toronto when i was really young like 16 like 15 16 17 i'd always go down from collingwood to skateboard with carl and all my you know collingwood boys and uh we'd skate the banking district or whatever and meet up with west Lotes. and but i remember like pretty sure meeting cash in a couple times then and then you know in the beginning out here and then skating with cash and at like red bricks and different places and you know, we weren't really great friends or whatever, and then we got to know each other more through, like, Wildcats and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, I remember just, uh, yeah, Cashin was loose, man. He was getting, he'd party hard. Just remember Whistler, when he got he'd, that? He'd just get naked and <laughs> run around loose yeah. around Whistler Bowl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you remember that cover shot that where he was in, like, Detroit, I think, and he had a fucking legit rail cover shot? Do you remember that? Yeah. That was so yeah, yeah. badass. Yeah, it was badass. It like, he, I don't know if he really got to be like, it was like a double decker, like stadium shit. It was like yeah. a 20 foot drop on one side. And yeah. He should, like went over the back of it to his back. Did um, he? Oh, God. I, I just remember seeing the shot and being like, shit, that's gnarly. That's super duper gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was super proud of him when he came back with that. I was super From proud work. of him when he came back with no brain injury (laughs) I'm proud of everybody that hits rails like that that comes out of it with no brain injuries because that shit's fucking alien to me because I like you didn't know that I yeah rarely hit rails like I was I remember I was at Kissing Bridge I think I was 15 Kissing Bridge New York for the Can-Ams and they had this red rail in their park coming out of the trees and some other rails this was you know 92, 93, I guess, back when resorts were just kind of like throwing rails up here, just like, hey, maybe, you, know, you want a rail? <laughs> I remember hitting this rail and just like zinging out, clacking my head, and just realizing after that, like, I'm done with this rail game. Like, <laughs> I hit, I did barely hit rails on my skateboard, like, not, I never hit many big down rails, but I would hit like little, little rails and stuff. And yeah. I will leave that with skateboarding, but and then like just watching people, the level they would get to and stuff, like it's dangerous as shit. Not that you know other big mountain stuff isn't dangerous or big jumps aren't dangerous, but in a different way. Yeah, who would inspire you in the backcountry in those days? Like who who were you chasing to like? I oh, fuck, I want to ride like that guy. Um. Well, shit. That was, I guess, like. You know, whiskey, whiskey three days when it was, you know, you know, Al Clark, Sheen Campos, um, KY, uh, all the other people hitters. like just everybody that was in all the whiskey videos. And did, did anyone take you under their wing and, and, and say, okay, here, like you got to do this and you're going to be more marketable or, did you just come up with that, the skill of picking sponsors on your own? Um, yeah, that it just kind of came about naturally because, uh, you know, because I rode for Sims in the beginning and then at the U.S. Open, then I got on spare clothing and then, the, so I had that clothing and boards covered and then from that part, uh, yeah, I just, and then I got Iris, obviously, when I moved out to BC when I was 18. I was, like, on that team from the beginning. And because I didn't have all my eggs in one basket, like, I wasn't a Burton kid or whatever, since I already had my eggs spread out, then it just, 
diversified even more. I was like, oh, well, I'm op- open to have a glove sponsor and a goggle sponsor and all these different sponsors. And, it, you know, obviously I thought about it and it was like, oh, this is kind of smart to spread everything out a little bit. So if Fuck yeah. it doesn't work out with these guys and then realizing that all these sponsors are feeding off each other because when I get ad, you know, like I had a lot of magazine advertisements where I'm getting ads with, Everybody, so it's just compounding. And who was on the Billabong team when you were on there? Was that um, the Kevin Jones and uh, Tara Dakita's days? Yeah, yeah. Sick. I I got on Billabong I think when I was twenty two. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, um, Andrew Crawford, Kevin oh, yeah. Jones, Tara Dakita's. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank right now. Uh, oh yeah, no. The, who else? I, uh, I'm just because I can remember their trade show booth. It was huge. Their their clothing wasn't really that like prevalent in Canada at that no, time. No, no, definitely. But they were not. huge in the states. Massive, massive. Yeah. And their line was beautiful. And B- Billabong Road for I mean <laughs> Billabong Road, uh, Slaznik Road for Billabong oh, before that. Yeah. Slaznik was on Billabong, yeah, so I was always fuck like yeah. hyped on that. I think it basically uh, he was off by the time I got on there. Right, right in the tail end. When you beat him at the U.S. Open, where you guys, you guys were teammates at the time. You're riding. His yeah, board. I, was, I was amateur. You yeah, know, kid yeah. from Ontario, and yeah. I had met him the year before, and uh, I met him that year. But you know, I was just a little kid on sim, so I met him and Palmer and Tina Bassett yeah. and the whole crew Rad. and Vincent. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, so I basically. Uh, did you do any trips with him with with Salas? Yeah, yeah. With yeah, in the beginning, like I used to go down to Tahoe since I, you know I was sixteen when Sims put me on the pro team. So we would have Sims photo shoots in Tahoe, and it would be like Neil Drake, Aaron oh, yeah. Vincent, Noah Slaznik, um, Palmer um, was on Sims like just. He, I guess he was still on Sims for a couple of days, but I didn't really do too many trips with him other than seeing out, seeing at the U.S. Open those yeah. couple of years. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely, I spent time with Slaznik and Aaron Vincent. Like What's, those, they, they, they always had the best weed too. Like, yeah. We yeah. Into Tahoe and like Av and Slaznik had obviously the in the going from wild. They had just the nicest Cali fucking weed. Ever and you know I was like 16 at the time, just so hyped, like oh my god, I'm with Slaznik and AB, like smoking the. Real. I remember at Windell's one summer I was like 18. We went to this dirt bike track somewhere near like uh, just outside of uh, government camp. Yeah. And Slaznik lent me his dirt bike. He had like a KX250, and he's like, Fuck let yeah. me take it for like an hour to rip this track. And it scared the shit out of me, man, because, <laughs> like, Slaznik was a sick dirt bike rider, and I was an 18-year-old kid with, like, little to no dirt bike skills, but figuring it out, and it's like, that was just cool, man. Like, I saw the way you drove home tonight, and I'm like, you, everything you do, you do fast, yeah? Like, so can I, I can't even imagine you on a, on a dirt bike for the first time just, like, sending it. Yeah, well, I was just trying to keep it, actually just trying not to die, like, a 250... <laughs> KX 250, two stroke, gotten out, like, yeah, I, I was, you know, that was the start of it, like, I didn't even own a dirt bike by that point, then I, a guy bought Browner's 98, uh, YZ 125, when I was 18, when I moved out here. Rad. And, uh, I started to get into dirt biking a bit more, and, but I never, uh, grew up dirt biking or nothing, so it was, it was really, like, new to me like magical like just to go to like tracks or go to like the track on the res and Tawasson back back then like early 2000 like 99 yeah what a life dude that's fucking awesome like those those days were just so fucking hype and being based around like the lower mainland whether it's Whistler or Vancouver there's just so much shit to do all the time yeah, there's so many logging roads, a lot of yeah, a lot of exploration going on here. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I fucking love living out here. 
It's got to be oh, man. the best place in the world. Oh, it's incredible. Like, yeah. I lived in Whistler until 2006, mm-hmm. from 96 till 06, and then I got my place here in Squamish. Uh, that's been like 14 years now, but I love Squamish. It's the, such a perfect, like, half an hour to Vancouver, half an hour to Whistler. Yeah. You got the ocean, the rivers, like, it's... Those lakes. Oh, it's man. It's so it's, epic to go up to. Yeah, we're in the center of the universe here. It's, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's fucking awesome, man. Is there anyone you want to shout out to? Anything you want to say to your fucking fans? You still have tons of fans, dude. People Shut love... <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh shit! I like to <laughs> shout out everybody, all my fans, <laughs> so all my family, everybody. You know who you are. Like, damn, my mom, all my sponsors, everybody that ever messed with you, everybody that ever hooked me up. Um, yeah, it's been a blessed life. I've really, uh, I've really been on an amazing path here, and now I'm just sitting here. Squamish, 41, still getting pow. I can't complain, man. Yeah, I really, uh, really, uh, a lot of gratitude for everything I've been through. It's, Thanks for doing this, awesome. dude. Well, I really thank appreciate you. Thank it. Thank you for coming up. Yeah, anytime. I know, uh, I'm loving it, loving your radio voice. <laughs> I've really been killing it. I've listened to, like, so many of the podcasts. Oh, uh, thanks, yeah, man. It's really cool to. That's over, I that's why I do it for sure. When I hear that guys like you listen to it, I'm like, fuck. Oh man, it's so interesting. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> awesome, thanks, buddy. Yeah, doggy. All right. Whoop whoop. F and rad shoutouts this week to Anson and Dano. Had a rad time shredding with you guys this week. Special thanks to Steve and Jonathan at Burton for hooking up the show with support from Anon Goggles. I've been riding Anon M3s and now the M4s, which both have magnetic lens technology and absolutely rule. Thanks again, you guys. Love the support. And thanks to all the listeners who send messages and feedback about the show. One last thank you to Craig Dexter. Cheers, man. You know I appreciate the letter you forwarded to me, so be sure to come back next week for another episode of the Affenrad Snowboarding Podcast. Brought to you by SIA Productions.